Hi there, welcome back. Welcome to video two of the Grundig 2147 restoration. And I want to show you basically what I've done so far and explain some of the logic behind it. Now, but just before we get on with that, I'd like to invite you to visit the sponsors of this video, PCB Way. They are the PCB manufacturers that I use. You will get amazing prices. Right now they're running the PCB Way Big Sale, the Christmas Shopping Festival 2020. And you'll be able to enjoy some incredible discounts, a lot of giveaways, a lot of prizes, a lot of vouchers, just the right solution for your Christmas needs. So pop over to PCBWay.com and help support the sponsors of this video. We um, determined in the last video that the transformers, the power transformer and the output transformer seem to be okay. That is not to say that we don't need to check everything up to that point. And it's a good thing I did. And I'll tell you what I found. First of all, I changed the plug. It had one of these plugs, two prong, with no earth, no mains earth. And I want to make sure this thing's a little bit safer, especially since I'm going to use the Bluetooth uh, receiver. And with earth on the chassis, it does tend to reduce noise somewhat. So I replaced it with a three prong, prong cord. And all I did was I actually took out this uh, clamp on the side here and it's got a bit of uh, sleeving on there so I put that on as well. One wire, the live, comes through here through this green tube to the on-off switch. That's just an on-off power switch here. This is the AUS uh, piano key down here. So that goes to there. The other one, the neutral, in this case goes into there, into the fuse. Now this is a little bit convoluted because you should actually put the uh, fuse first and then that should go to the switch. That would be the logical step. This is not how they've done it. I've left it original. And then what I've done is I've put a mains earth to the chassis. And that you can see in there. I've got a star washer underneath that. It's the uh, original screw that's holding the transformer from the top end. So this is a really good mains earth. It's got a tag on there, it's soldered, and then it's got some heat shrink on here. So that's going to stay there for a long time and we've got a safe system now. So what we've basically got here is we've got the mains uh, cord coming in, going to the on-off switch. Presumably that on-off switch then goes to the transformer. And then the other side of the transformer is fed through the neutral, through the uh, fuse at the top there, and then to the transformer as well. It was supposed to be working and the way to test if it's working is you take your power cord, you put your multimeter between there and there, you click on at the front and you should get, you should be measuring across here just the resistance of the primary of the transformer. Well that was not the case. I was getting, well, a few meg actually and that was a bit strange because it had worked before. And this is where it gets a bit, uh, it can trick you. There was nothing wrong with it. The only thing that needed to be done is that on the fuse, the actual fuse is fine and it's a 300 milliamp fuse for the 220 volt option. If you go to the bottom here and you choose 110 volts or 115, you need to use a 600 milliamp fuse. So the fuse is fine, but the contacts in this fuse holder were completely tarnished. So when you measure with a, uh, a multimeter, you're measuring with very low voltages and it's just not enough to break through that tarnish. So what we were not getting was continuity across the fuse, or rather from the fuse holder to the fuse connector. And so that can con you, that can really get you, because at first you think it's the switch or something. But I've done these before, I've had the same problem before, so I used a little, little bit of very, very fine wet and dry sandpaper, roll it into a tube and you just play around inside there till this thing gets nice and shiny on the inside, cleaned it up, and of course, I'll show you what the result is. So what we have is we've got the multimeter across the live and neutral. We're getting an open circuit. If I go into here and I press one of the channel selects, in other words, I pressed medium wave or doesn't matter, it switches on the switch and you're reading 37.6 ohms. What you're actually reading is the primary resistance for the 220 volt winding of the transformer. And that's pretty easy to see if we look at the schematic. So this is the part we're interested in. 
And if I go, if I choose the comment option and I've got the uh, polyline here, I now know that my mains comes in, goes through the switch, switch is working, goes to the primary, it's going through the primary, it goes to the fuse, through the fuse, which is fine, goes to the other end, and I know that that line is fixed, it's done. I also know that these two are there because the uh, second fuse holder is effectively where you'd put the 117. Here they've got 117. On the fuse holder, I think it says 110. And on the schematic somewhere else, it says like 115 or something. It doesn't matter. Um, what else do we have here? We've got this information here, which says 220 volts, 0.3 amp, Träger, whatever, rating, I suppose. 117 volts, 0.6 amps rating. This is the fuse rating for S... What is that? SI or SL? I'm not sure how you say fuse in German. Anyway, it's got a 300 milliamp fuse, so that's fine. It goes through the transformer, and now we've got to carry on on the other side. Now, I've just shown you this to give you an idea of how this um, schematic gets painted as I go through. I've had to change absolutely nothing here, so that stays as is. Next, next, we're going to look at this part of the circuit here. Now, I know that this is my selenium rectifier. It's got two AC inputs, and they're marked down here with the AC symbol. There's my negative out and my positive out. There we go. So, AC, AC, it's these two wires. And I know they're coming from the transformer. I can see them. And then the output here, positive is on the side, negative is on that side and they go off to the left there. Now, where do they go? They go to this capacitor. Now, there's the negative, which is soldered to the capacitor case, it's soldered to the pin coming through from the capacitor. So it's soldered to the capacitor case and to the chassis right over here. It's a very, very well-made ground point. The positive goes to one of the uh, internal capacitors there. And then from there, you've got a wire coming out and it is going to the radio. Hmm. I think this is wrong. Yeah, I've just found a mistake that I made. I'll explain why. This wire should go to there, to that red one. Because the red one goes to the first... Yep. All right, this is the wrong way around. Now, what I did is I took some photos beforehand, and I obviously didn't look at them at the end. Overconfidence, big problem, very big problem. Um, so, the rectified uh, DC comes here, goes to first filter cap. It also then goes to the power transformer, the output transformer, I beg your pardon. And it comes back from the output transformer to the other cap. Now, that's because on the output transformer, we've got a 1.3, I think it is, 1.3K uh, resistor, which creates the second B+. Now... What I decided to do is I wanted to keep this thing looking original, so I removed all this and I dismantled the whole thing and I restuffed the uh, filter capacitors. You've probably seen me do that before or you've seen others do that before. Basically what it involves is you take it out, you open the lid, you pull everything out and then you rip out the guts. You literally pull them out, melt them out, drill them out, do whatever you like. You rip out the internals of the old capacitor clean everything up, and then you have to put in two new capacitors, and I've used uh, 47 microfarad 400 volt capacitors. The two negatives are put together and they come out uh, to connect to the chassis. Basically, they are going to be the common negative of the capacitor, of this dual cap. And the two positives come out on little holes just next to the tags, which then get wrapped around the, the existing tags, soldered, and those become the new tags for the new capacitors. And then everything's put back, and it looks quite good. Quite frankly, you just cannot tell that this thing's been removed. It uh, keeps the look original, and those caps are perfectly new. And on the other side, I've written, replaced two by 47 microfarads, 400 volts. So that is done, which means we now have to record that on our schematic, because we really do want to keep track of everything we do on the radio, on the schematic. Now, let me show you. So what have we done? We're still on this section. And basically what we've done is we've checked that this comes out here. 
from there to the selenium rectifier. I know the selenium rectifier is connected to the chassis ground and I know the positive of the selenium rectifier is coming out here. Now I'm not going to paint the selenium rectifier green yet. I will probably replace that at the end. I know it's working because this thing received B+. I don't know how much B+. So what I need to do, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to do everything first, then see what voltages I get once I've corrected the capacitor problems in this radio so that I know exactly what the voltage is over here rather than what it is now because there may be a lot of leaky capacitors so the actual voltage here may not be a reflection of what this radio should have. And at the end, I'll make a decision about this uh, selenium rectifier, probably replace it with a silicon one. So we've got this coming out here and we've got it coming to this capacitor. So again, we've got it coming to here, to there and to there. And we know that this capacitor is connected to ground. I'm doing this at nauseum just to show you how I normally go about it. And what I've done is I've replaced this. So I've replaced both of them. In fact, that is too small. So current, well, no, no, it's not what I want. The properties for that comments element can be changed and I'm going to make it nice and thick. This goes up to 12 and I can make those properties current. Good, there we go. So that one's been changed. And of course, this is the common capacitor. So now we've got ourselves a symbol here that, well, an indication here that we've replaced to this capacitor. Now, what else can we check on here? Well, we know that this capacitor, this point here, comes up and it goes to somewhere on that output transformer block. I've seen that happen. It's the red wire. And I have checked that there is continuity to that point there and it goes into there, but I haven't checked the rest. This uh, point here is B+. Plus. This is the highest voltage, positive voltage you will get. This is the B+. Plus. It comes up and it goes there, and then it's going to go through the primary of the output transformer to the anode of the EL84. And the anode of the EL84, if we look up here, is pin 7. There's the anode. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what we do, we put a multimeter at that capacitor point over there, and we measure continuity to pin seven of that EL84, and we will see if this thing has continuity. So I have connected my multimeter to that point there on the filter cap. And now I'm going to the pin seven of the EL84 tube socket. So here it is from the top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I get 431 ohms, which means I'm reading the um, DC resistance of that first, the primary winding of the output transformer, which is perfect, which is great. It means that's fine. Now, what else can I measure on here? I can do another measurement, which is to the other capacitor. And what I should get is that resistor that um, I have in line there, which is supposed to be 1.3K. It does indeed give us 1.37K, so that is fine. I can also measure it at the screen of the EL84, because I know that uh, that receives the B2+. Plus. And that is pin 9. So if I go to pin 9, one3 k So that's fine. So what has this told me? Well, it tells me quite a bit actually, because it tells me that from this point here, this is actually going to there and it's getting to the anode of the EL84, so I can paint that in. It also tells me that from there, it goes through a small part of the output transformer winding and it comes out here and it goes through a 1.3K resistor, which is measuring just fine so I can paint it green and it goes to here and it goes to that second capacitor, that second filter cap. It also goes 
to the screen G2 of the um, EL84. So I've actually painted that in already because those have been checked. And that's great because now we're one step further. You see, now I just look at the top of that output transform and I see what components I've got there. I can see I've got a couple of, uh, I've got a resistor, which is this one we've just measured. This is a quite a strong resistor, quite a powerful one. I think we've got the rating here somewhere. That is the two stripes. You see those two stripes over there? And if you look at this over here, two stripes, that one there, two watt. That's a two watt resistor. And that is measuring just fine. I can look at this now and I know that everything that I've painted green is working just fine. That's how I get along. That's how I do this. That's how I take this one step at a time using the comments commenting function, which is actually drawing markups on the Adobe um, Adobe Reader. And just for information, this is this is Adobe Reader 11. OK. And that's giving us all we need. Perfect. You might have noticed that part of this radio is starting to look different. You can see the transition here. And the transition is this side is clean, that side isn't. And what I've done is as I go checking parts here, like the fuses and cleaning the fuse holders and everything else, I take the opportunity to actually clean that uh, chassis in the vicinity of where I'm working and checking. And um, I just use some isopropyl alcohol and then some cotton swabs to clean it up. And it cleans very, very well. The condition of the chassis is impeccable. It just needed a bit of a wipe down. All this has been cleaned, tube holders, uh, the fuses, the wires. So this whole section here that I've worked on has already been cleaned. And this means that, and because I hate cleaning, this means that when I get to the end, checking all the electronics, which I enjoy doing, most of the radio has been cleaned. Uh, so I don't need to really dedicate that much time to cleaning the chassis and so on. Right, let's carry on. We're a bit further along. I've uh, removed those two caps there. I've tested those components at the top there. Everything's fine now. I replaced that one there, which is 150 nanofarads, which is supposed to be this. Well, it was this one here. This thing is completely messed up. It's a uh, completely different value and it's leaking. So I replaced that. I didn't have a 150. I had 147. So those two are in parallel. That one there has been replaced as well. That's this uh, 4.7 nanofarads. So the top here really is done as far as components are concerned. All we need to do there is clean and at some point come back to that mess. Now what that means is we've got a bit more we can color in here. We've got that capacitor done. We've got this capacitor done. Now I want to show you how we test this. Now, how would you test this? I mean, you've got this thing coming to a switch. From this capacitor, it goes to a switch and then it goes to ground. And at some point the switch is open and at some point it's closed. Now I'll show you very, very quickly how it's done. All I do is I connect the multimeter to this, point to the capacitor, to there, and to ground. And at some point, in one condition, we should have an open circuit. In another condition, we should have a short. Now, what condition is that? If we look at DC, so that's switch D, section C, 5 and 6. Well, what is that? If we go to the switch diagram here, there are the switches. D is over here. C is over here. And 5 and 6 are, if we look at this end, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's those two over there. And if we look at the switch uh, arrangement we have here, this is actually the FM switch, if I'm not mistaken. Second to last one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the multimeter and show you that we can actually test it without having to go look for the switches. So I know that it's between this point here, I believe it's this side of the capacitor. Is it? Yes. And well, let's stick to convention. Positive goes there. And the negative goes to ground. 
anywhere is ground really. Just a convenient ground point. I prefer to use these for grounds because I can connect it just to anywhere on the chassis. Put that on ohms and what we have. We have a short. Now if I go to this switch over here, it's not that one, it's that one. It's the FM switch. When I click the FM switch, that um, switch D, C, 5 and 6 opens, or rather closes there, opens there. So that means that as far as my um, schematic is concerned, I can, in all confidence, complete that drawing, complete the painting on that section. So I can simply do this. And that's done. Right, we've got a lot more to do. I just, I'm not going to go through every single test, but I just wanted to show you that. Sometimes the way to test continuity on these things, you've got to be a bit creative, you've got to study the diagram, you've got to understand what the switch diagram is. You don't need to, but it makes it a hell of a lot easier if you do. Just spend a bit of time on analyzing what it is you're working with, and it makes the work a lot easier. Right, let me carry on. Now, the one thing that always worries me with these things is this guy over here. This point over here. So that capacitor over there. Now this capacitor over here is a problem because if it leaks, then it'll send DC voltage from the grid, or rather from the uh, plate of this tube. That's high voltage over there, or fairly high voltage and it'll send it through to the grid of this tube, which you don't want. That capacitor there, C6, is a DC blocking capacitor. So it should do just that. It should block all DC and allow no leakage. Now what I found is that this capacitor is not normal. It's not the usual type of cap. It actually is a Styroflex. If we look at the description down here, it's a 500 volt Styroflex. Now these caps normally don't leak. They're effectively film caps, if I'm not mistaken. So I want to show you what that looks like on the underside. And I'm also going to show you something I've discovered. This capacitor we're talking about is that guy down there. You can sort of see it. Let me see if I can... No, it's as close as it goes. It's sort of visible down there. And you can see it. There we go. There it is. All right. Now what I've done, this thing comes to a tag point over here. One of those that's uh, soldered to the uh, central uh, cylinder of the uh, tube socket. This is the EL84. That there is the ABC80. So it comes from the plate of that one to the grid, or rather to this intersection here, which I've desoldered, of two resistors and that capacitor. So I desoldered it for a reason. Because those things don't normally leak, and because this is a real, real bummer to remove, I'm going to test it and see if we need to remove it. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you this part and then I'll show you what I'm doing here. This is a one probe is going to one side of that capacitor. Right, it's basically going to the grid, or rather to the plate of that tube. The other one, this probe is going to this end of the capacitor, which is connected to nothing, and it's important that it's connected to nothing, okay? Don't forget that. Now, what have we connected on here? This is connected to the capacitance leakage tester, which I'm just going to power on there. And what I'm going to do, that capacitor is supposed to be a 500 volt cap. Now, this is basically a variable high voltage power supply and it's very low current and it is floating. So I can connect this negative lead anywhere I want and where I connected it is to the plate, to the one side of that capacitor which happens to be the plate uh, or the anode of the EABC80. But this one is connected to a floating point which is the other side of the capacitor. So it doesn't really matter where it is 
because it is floating as long as I don't short this to anything else. Now, if I switch it on, when I click this to here, this is the 100 milliamp scale. So this will give me the voltage that uh, the capacitor is seeing, and this is going to give me the current that's flowing. This is the leakage current that's flowing through that capacitor. Now, if I do that, that's reading 100 milliamps. It's a 100 milliamp scale on here. And I'm putting up the voltage, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 300 volts. And I put it on the 10 milliamp scale, absolutely nothing. 1 milliamp scale, there's absolutely no leakage whatsoever at 300 volts. 0.1 milliamp scale, in other words, this whole thing is 100 microamps. There is absolutely no leakage at all. So that capacitor is perfectly fine. I click this to off, it shorts out the cap, and I can reduce the voltage. So I don't need to replace that cap. But let me show you what happens if we take this to one of the other capacitors. If we connect this capacitor, for example, which is the one I took off the top there. Now this one is a 250 volts. So we can go to 250 volts, we can't go to 300, which is fine. And watch that. The minute you put it on, it gives it a bit of a jump, that's a charging current, that's fine. Put up the voltage to 100 volts, let's put it on the 10 milliamp scale, 1 milliamp scale, whoa. You see that on the 1 milliamp scale, it's 0.1 milliamps at 100 volts. And if I go up 150, 200 volts, it's at 0.4, almost 0.4 milliamps of leakage. So this thing is completely, completely leaky. By the way, don't touch that. That's high voltage. So we'll short that out, drop the voltage. So these were definitely not restuffed. These are definitely just kaput. This is the other one I took from the top there. Now this is 4.7 nanofarads at a thousand volts, so I can do whatever I want on here. Put on the 100 milliamp scale and start pumping the voltage up. Goes up to about 350. Not much. On the 1 milliamp scale, it's just tweaking. On the 100 microamp scale, so that's leaking 20 microamps. Not much, but it's still leaky. Okay. So, what we found is that by testing that capacitor in circuit, and don't forget we had to lift one leg for that, I now no longer have to remove that cap and replace it. That one's staying exactly where it is. And I think that might be the only film cap that was on here. So what I need to do now, obviously, is I'm going to resolder all these to that point after checking the two resistors. And the two resistors are a 1 meg to ground and a 1k to the grid. Actually, we might as well test them now. So connected the multimeter to ground. Let's check the 1 meg resistor. 1.015 meg, that's perfect. Let's check the 1K resistor. This 1K resistor is to the to the grid. Oh, come on. 1.01 K, perfect. So those components are fine. And that means that I can literally do this. This resistor is fine, that resistor is fine, and also this line has been checked from there to there, to there, and to there. That's another bit of testing that's done. And so on, and so on, and so forth. Right. This video is going on for a while again. I'm going to stop this one here. I'm going to carry on with this rather, well, it's actually 
quite easy to do. It's rather difficult to report to you because it's stop, start, stop, start, two cameras. It, it takes a hell of a lot longer to film and edit and everything else than it does to do, believe me. When you're using this, uh, this system here, it really makes it easy to, to check your circuit. This looks like a very labored way of doing it, but believe me, it is quite efficient. So I'm going to leave you for now and uh, get cracking. I've got quite a bit to do and come back as soon as I've got something to report. Hopefully, the next time I come back, we'll be able to have the audio section completely checked and I'll be able to test this, at least test the audio and see if we've solved that problem of that uh, distortion. So for now, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Stay safe.